verses, just verse 1 through to 5, and then we'll understand why it is important to pray and what is prayer, because prayer is reminding God of his promises through his word. And so we want to understand from the scripture if really prayer is really reminding God of what he said. Hear what the Bible said in Isaiah 38. In those days when Ezekiah sick unto death, and Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, said, came unto him and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, set thy house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. Then Ezekiah turned his face towards the wall and prayed unto the Lord. And hear what he said. He said, and said, remember now, O Lord. Hear what he said, remember now, O Lord. So he was reminding God, I have beseeched thee now. How I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart and have done that which is good in thy sight. And Ezekiah wept sore. So Ezekiah now was reminding God of how he had walked with him and how he had been in truth and how his heart was perfect. So the Bible said that then came the word of the Lord to Isaiah saying, Go and say to Ezekiah, Thus said the Lord, the God of David thy father, I have heard thy prayer, I have seen thy tears, Behold, I will add unto thy days 15 years. So you see why it is so much important to pray? Prayer is a powerful weapon. As Bishop would always say, a powerless power Christian. A power, or, powerless Christian. A powerless, a prayerless Christian is a powerless Christian. Amen. So the Bible let us know that Ezekiah reminded God of his word. So our prayers, when we pray, we should remind God. Remember God that you said that you are my refuge. Remember God that you said that you are my fortress. Remember God that you said that he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most I shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. So the importance of prayer in evangelism is because evangelism is snatching souls from the devil and bringing them into the kingdom of God. This means that there will be a conflict between the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of light because the Bible said that man rather darkness than light because their ways are evil and their deeds are wicked, amen? So because of that, we will have a conflict between the souls bringing them into the body of Christ. So we have to have a prior life. So before we be great evangelism, we have to ensure that our prior life is up to date. The Bible said that Daniel prayed three times every day because he understand what the devil is coming with. And he knows that the devil always have a plan. So before the devil strikes at him, he said, listen to me, I am going to pray unto my father who is in heaven because I know that he will protect me when we pray. Because for us to be good evangelism, if we go out there and we don't pray and we try to win over the sinners, how are we going to win them over? Because we did not acknowledge God and we did not say, God, we are going to evangelize. We put the sinners in your hand. We don't know the individual that we are going to. Because sometimes these persons are antichrist. Some of them don't believe in God. Some of them believe in Pentecostal only. Some of them believe in Jehovah's Witness. Some believe in Sabbath. Some believe in Church of God. Some are from other denominations. And some of these people are outsiders. And some of these people know they challenge us as believers. So for us to challenge the devil, we have to pray. Amen? So we have to ensure that we have a prayer life because the Bible said that we are to pray without season so we cannot just get up and say okay God I'm going to pray and we forget to pray so as great evangelism we have to ensure that we have a prayer life without deep fervent and intense prayer 
the result of our efforts will be in vain. So if we don't pray and we go out to evangelize, then we are going to come back to the church and then we are not going to have any souls. Amen? So when the pastor asked us, how many souls did you evangelize to? We did not get any because everybody refused to listen to us. But when we pray and we summon that spirit that is hanging over that individual, then we have no problem. So prayer is one of the greatest tools God has given us. Prayer releases God's presence in our lives and empower us as we reach out to others. So we will look at the types of evangelism as I will be just scanning through and come to a close. So we'll understand the different types of evangelism. But before we understand the different types of evangelism, it seems that we should go on class to end today. So the message of evangelism, what are we going to preach when we go out there and evangelize? We have to say that Jesus came in the form of a man and many persons will ask us, how can a virgin give birth to a child? Don't it? Well, the Holy Spirit came upon her and she conceived. And if they challenge you and ask you where this come from, tell them it comes from Luke chapter 1, verses 31. You can read that in your spare time so you can write down that um, book of the Bible, the book of Luke chapter 1, verses 31. Jesus came in the form of a man born of a virgin. Luke chapter 1, verses 31. And listen, he died on the cross for our sins. And that's from 1 John chapter 2 and verses 2. So Jesus, born of a virgin, he died on the cross. John chapter, 1 John chapter 2, verses 2. And on the third day, he was resurrected. So he's no longer in the grave. No, Sister Shaman. So he's no longer in the borrowed tomb. He is now raised from the dead. And that's taken from Mark chapter 16, verses 9. So you can go home and read that in your spare time. So the message of our evangelism is to let the people know that, listen, it was a man that was born of a virgin. He died on the cross and he rose from the grave. And he is the only one that can save us. Amen? Our mother cannot save us, our spouse, our husband, our wives, our children cannot save us. It's only God that can save us. So as we said that we'll be looking at the types of evangelism and the types of evangelism are come say them with me, personal, friendship, social evangelism, literature and literacy evangelism, Mass and multimedia evangelism, child and children evangelism, youth and young adults evangelism, hospital and hospitality evangelism. Yes, it's a lot. And this is a wonderful um, course. So as we move along, we'll understand more about it. Can we, somebody read what is personal evangelism? Personal evangelism is the act of a person sharing the gospel with another one on one. Right, so personal evangelism is the act of a person sharing the gospel with another. You understand what that means? What it means? All right, so it's like Sister Harry sharing with Sister Shamoya. Right? So one day Sister Harris just walked up to Sister Shamaya and said, Listen, I think I need to share something with you, right? I see you sitting down by yourself. What is wrong with you? You know? I I I I am a Christian, you know, and I've been serving God for a period of time. And I want to tell you that Jesus loves you. Because as evangelists, we have to console the person, allow them to feel comfortable. Say, you know what? God loves you. So personal evangelism is not um three persons not four person, but it's a personal. It's me and you, or you and me. Amen? So let us, that is very simple to understand. And as we know that personal evangelism, it cannot be outlawed. 
Why are you saying that it cannot be all long? It cannot because you cannot stop me from evangelizing to just one person. You cannot tell me, all right, you cannot tell Sister Shamaya that God loves her, or you cannot tell Sister Shamaya that she needs to serve God. It's a one to one thing. It's not like I'm going in the big arena and proclaiming it. It's just a personal thing. It is very cheap. We don't need no money to do personal evangelism. Because I don't need to go and give Shamaya any money saying, oh, we are fire for Jesus. No, it is uh, costless. Amen. Everyone can do it. Yes. So nobody in the church cannot say, okay, pastor, okay, minister, I cannot evangelize. Oh, I cannot preach. You don't have to no one be a preacher. You can just know the word of the Almighty. For you to be a good evangelist, you have to know the word. You have to be humble, don't it? And you have to have a passion for souls. So for you to be a good evangelist, what must you do? You must be humble. You must be, you must know the word. And you must have a passion for souls. They can write that if you want. To be a good evangelist or to um, be a good soul winner. One, you must know the word because you will be challenged by some sinners because sinners indeed, some of them know the Bible that they man made. One, second one, you must be humble. You must be patient enough to listen to the sinners. And the third one, you must have a passion for souls. All right, so we move to the other one, and that is friendship evangelism. Who wants to read that one for me, Sister Iris? No friendship. Friendship evangelism is developing a relationship with the people in order to show them kindness and talk to them about what it is. Alright, so this one now is building a relationship with the individual. 